YouTube, it's Tom, back with another one for you. So, this one here is actually the, uh, I think it's the first redemption manual, might even be the second, I'm not 100% sure, it doesn't say it on it. But it's like, so it's one of the uh, first ones and it goes into a lot of the basics that I think a lot of people should know. And I'm going to start going over this too as well. It teaches you the fundamental um, elements necessary to create a, you know, affidavit and things like that. Uh, and goes into uh, a lot of detail on things like that. A lot of a lot of basic things because I do get a lot of basic questions from people. Uh, that shows me that you know maybe uh, either people don't want to read or are, are are not are just maybe at the uh, beginning stages of this, which I didn't even think that 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 would be the case. But I know it's YouTube and we do grab a lot of new people, so I'm gonna start going over some of this stuff here. But this so this basically here is gonna be uh, how to reject an offer essentially. Now this now this uh this paper here I'm gonna make it a quick one. This one here is uh, is part of a larger document, so when we get to the bottom, it's probably not going to make as much sense because it's leading into the next uh, information. So, But I want to focus more on the top part of how to reject an offer from these people because everything that you get in the mail is going to be an offer, right? And they're waiting on your on your response, and if you don't respond to it, uh, you're going to throw it in your drawer, then you're going to become bound by that, by that contract uh, because of your actions. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't even have to be something that you actually sign. So, but all these people are third parties and everything that they send you is an offer, you can counter offer. You know what I mean? So right here, uh, the disclaimer, any information passed along via email, paper copies, or computer disk it is for educational purposes only and does not constitute legal, professional, or tax advice. It is the reader's responsibility to study the issues, laws, and decide what to do with this information. Also, all of the information pertains to Texas rules, uh, and these rules may differ from your state or county. From this information is simply a personal preference and personal opinion. So please study the issue and make up your own mind about everything that you choose to do. A lot of this shit here is uh, it's just the real deal. So number one, answer immediately. Do not put off your paperwork, right? So you usually have 72 hours from when you get something to, to send a reply. Usually they'll give you a date and things like that too. For you to work with but you can you know and you can give them dates too you know what i mean so uh so number two never answer a third party but respond with a rejection of contract offer telling him uh him and all of his heirs agents and assignees that they are third parties and to get out of your commercial affairs and that's the thing all these people are just you know they're private corporations trying to trying to butt their way into your business which they have no freaking authority to do so unless you give it to them via contract by either not answering or that's mainly probably gonna gonna be it because if you just sent them something back and asked them to prove that they even have the authority to even be harassing you i'm pretty sure that'll be the last conversation that you guys have so number three always send the rejection uh rejected offers of contract back to the entity that sent them to you and then copy uh anyone else involved so if you have somebody suing you right and they go to the, the state of so you so now you got a courthouse and you got this fucking dude making a claim now one one is a third party so even if you have a deal with somebody he's going and getting a third party involved uh which they may or may not have authority to harass you but you know you're you're better off making them prove that they do and don't freaking assume that they do because most likely they don't so if you get a summons complaint taped to your front door and it doesn't say where it came from it probably came from the sheriff reject it and send it back to the sheriff via certified or registered mail uh, then copy the court and the other party on the summons, usually a lawyer, if you get it in the mail, make sure you look at the return address. Sometimes a service company sends it to you. It must be rejected and sent back to the service company and all the parties copy to it. So you'll see all the names on there and addresses and you want to go ahead and send it back to the person making the uh, complaint initially and then copy anybody there. So it's going to be the courthouse and the lawyers on there with their address or if it's a collections agency with the LLC, you want to go ahead and copy everybody on that. So the courthouse is going to get copied on the uh, rejecting the offer that you send back to whoever the hell sent it to you. So always remember they are after subject matter jurisdiction. Number five, the only thing involved in a controversy of the uh, the only thing involved in any controversy of court case is about jurisdiction. Number six, subject matter jurisdiction uh, is the same as challenging the court's jurisdiction, but in a nicer way. Instead of telling the judge in the court he doesn't have jurisdiction, you are telling the court that they don't have jurisdiction over the subject matter to hear the case. And, you know, a lot of judges freaking agree. And if you bring this up, probably not going to have any problems. I mean, I sat in the courthouse a few times and heard, you know, the judge say, hey, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't have uh, jurisdiction here. So, you know, they're not, 
opposed to it but unless you bring it up they're going to assume that you agree to all the facts even if they're not facts so this gives them so this gives them an out right and you do want to give them an out you don't have to be an asshole to these people either you know yeah they're fucking scam artists but at least give them an opportunity to uh rectify the situation you know so smj is over the living person and that is why they never have it they must have first-hand knowledge and be a party to your contract and I, they never do and they never are <laughs> And that's the thing too. And I mean, you know, I always say that shit on my videos too. These people are just out here barking here, say they have, you know, making making all types of outrageous claims, defamation, all types of shit. And they don't even know you. They weren't even there. There's no affidavits involved. Who, you know what I mean? Come on, cut it out. So don't argue the charge, the amount, or anything other than the subject matter jurisdiction. Because when you start to argue the issues, you grant subject matter jurisdiction. And that's the thing. You don't want to create controversy. You want to go in there to settle the matter and uh get these fucking people out of your out of your business so you don't gotta waste your energy on them because that's all they want money energy whatever it's all the same thing attention attention seeking fucking attention seeking subject matter jurisdiction can only be gained with your permission by consent or assent making a plea grants consent uh number eight everything everything they do against us uh in the court is by affidavit and usually without any notice to us so you must check the court file daily to see if anyone has placed an affidavit against you and you must rebut every affidavit with an affidavit uh we will be lawful though and give uh grace and notice with our affidavits yeah you always want to give them time you know uh and, and and uh you know serve them properly the uh the administrative process and things like that so if you guys need, need any uh information on that the administrative process using notaries and things like that uh, you can go ahead and email me the information is free so if you rebut an affidavit or generate an affidavit always send it to the person it is against copy the court clerk if it is involving a court case uh give them personal notice and a grace period to rebut it you must include an address for them to send a rebuttal to either your address or a notary's address i suspect that the notary is who is supposed to receive the rebuttal number nine what if we are finding out that even though we did an affidavit in uh in court challenging subject matter jurisdiction that unless you go into a appointed court in time and stand up for the uh for the affidavit the judge will put a default against you we have added a cease and desist order to the affidavits which may take care of having to go to court but this hasn't been established yet cease and desist are awesome you know what i mean awesome which which they obviously serve as an affidavit as well and you know so they're gonna have to rebut that which usually they i mean what are they gonna say you know it really isn't a question i mean the people are the government and everything is a is you know commercial and everything's an offer so you know you don't you're not you have no obligations to entertain these people at all so i, I will not use the zip codes as, as it is for federal jurisdiction only it creates jurisdiction and sets up a pattern that a, uh, of a federal citizen sample address below all caps jack rabbit patriot non-domestic care of one two three lakeview drive dallas texas or below case all that so also only use a stamp because that does not that doesn't create jurisdictional problems but these stamp machines may so I'm telling you to put a physical stamp on the uh, letter and things like that if you're going to reject it so you can take the jurisdiction of all uh of all letters that you send return receipt uh request cards envelopes etc by signing your autographs in red ink at the bottom right uh at the bottom right on both the front and the back side of the page and that's the thing too it's like not you know you got like you actually have to sign the back of these documents too because they can try to securitize any of your signatures and shit like that and and, and uh so if there's nothing signed on the back they can just flip it around sign it on the back and keep it that shit is crazy so you want to make sure that you cover uh the front and the back bottom right sides in red ink with your signature <laughs> So basically you claim that shit and uh there's nothing that they can do about that so make sure you write it where no one else can sneak a number or a mark past it on the right underneath your autograph because they can do that too right so every time they hand you a piece of paper and they put their little x on it you know they're like oh, okay here sign sign right here and they put an x on the on the on the uh, signature line that's their signature your signature is any mark that you put on there so now after you sign that you agree to the whole document that whatever the hell that they gave you you see how sneaky these little scumbags are so with the autograph uh where is it with the autograph is used instead of a signature under a living man's name because a signature is uh is only the sign of someone's name authority it is not their real name did you ever hear anyone chasing a movie star or famous person saying give me your signature no it's always gonna have your autograph because the autograph is from the live living man 
So what the copy claim is used because anything you copyright claim is protected from being used against you unless you introduce it as evidence. And that's the thing too. So if you were to uh, try to try to put it in as evidence, then, then it becomes public information at that point. So then they would have the uh, authority to go ahead and use your name on whatever the hell they wanted. So, you know, rules to the game. This shit is tricky. It is a game of chess. Stop playing checkers with these clowns. That's what I got for you for now. Until we meet again.